So for, uh, for Ruby Freeman, $16 million for defamation. Also for Ruby Freeman, $20 million for emotional distress. For Shea Moss, $16 million for defamation. I'm approximating here. For emotional distress for Shea Moss, $20 million. And then on top of that, $75 million in punitive damages. Do I have that right? That is what I'm seeing as well as our reporting at this time. Um, one of the things to remember here is that punitive damages can skyrocket uh, in cases like this. They are something that really the jury has a lot of, of breath to go with. Although there are, there are laws that say it can't go more than three or four times the amount in the other damages that are assessed, but this is more than $148 million that's an astonishing amount of money. And this is against one man. This is Rudy Giuliani, a person, not a company, not a group of people, one person for the statements that he made after the 2020 election. One man who almost single-handedly ruined the reputations and, and lives of these two women, we should say, uh, I, 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 that I know you know. Um, so again, this is the, the, the lawyers originally asked for $48 million for Ruby Friedman and Shea Moss and they ultimately got $148 million. Uh, uh, really uh, shocking. Let me bring in uh, Evan Pettis now. Uh, Evan, um, really, uh, I guess, not surprising in, in one sense that the jury was asked um, to send a message right. to these election liars who are so careless and reckless not only with the truth, but with the reputations of innocent individuals like these two election workers, uh, one of whom was just a volunteer. But that is an astounding figure. I, I, I'm not sure that it will hold up uh, on appeal. Right. Uh, but it is an astounding figure, $148 million for the two of them. It, it truly is, Jake. And one of the things that, you know, look, one of the things about the American system, right, there's a lot of criticism about our system. But one of the things is that you can go to court and put a number on the cost of these lies that, uh, that, that, that Rudy Giuliani and, and Sidney Powell and Donald Trump and everybody around them uh, were parroting and were, were, were frankly just using as a cudgel against not only Ruby Freeman but against so many other people uh, in, the, in the wake of the, the former president's losing the election uh, in uh, 2020. And what this does is that you have a jury that has actually put a number to that cost, uh, just in the case of of of, uh, of of Rudy Giuliani, and in this case, it's a, it's just over 148 million dollars, is what the cost of that is. And and look, I mean, the the, the two women there uh, testified to the to the January 6th committee. They testified to this court. They've told their story of what this cost them. They can't go to to the store without being fearful. They've gotten all these threats. You've heard some of those awful, awful threat, the, the audio of some of those threats that they received, and they're not alone, right? Because the other, the other thing is that uh, this, is, this case is just a small reminder of, of the uh, threats that are being felt by election workers, by state officials, by people around the country. Anyone who was associated with, uh, with elections uh, has been on the receiving end of these types of threats, and people have to fear for their lives. And so some people, in this case, these two women have decided that they are going to court and fight back, and the cost uh, that uh, we now know from a jury that uh, that comes with that is 148 million dollars. I can read you just another uh, just another summation of, of these numbers uh, for defamation for Ruby Freeman, 16.1 million dollars uh, for uh, for uh, for uh, Shea Moss for just under 17 million dollars. Emotional distress for Ruby Freeman, 20 million dollars and 20 million dollars also for Shea Moss, and then the punitive damages uh, altogether. 75 million dollars according to this jury uh, here in Washington and so uh, put together again 148 million dollars something that Rudy that uh, that Rudy Giuliani has publicly said in various uh, other litigation he doesn't have the money to pay he we know that he has uh, Jake has put on the market some of his real estate he had real estate in New York and Florida that he has been trying to sell um, all of course uh, in the middle of uh, some other messy financial dealings that uh, that Rudy has had uh, he was trying to get rid of some other assets um, because of uh, a rather 
rest messy personal life that he's had over the last few years. So all together, uh, the question is uh, how much of this these two women will be able to recover to try to mend uh, the damage that has been done. It's not clear. It's going to be one of the things that happens now is that, Jake, the, these two ladies are going to have to hire lawyers to go chase after these assets around the country, wherever Rudy has them, to try to uh, attach their, their, their claims to it and, and be able to collect it. It's not over at all just because of this jury verdict today. Yeah, and we should note, I mean, earlier this year, Fox uh, had to pay $787.5 million right. uh, to Dominion Voting uh, because of the lies that their anchors, hosts, and guests constantly spewed uh, during uh, the same period. Uh, it turns out these lies and uh, defamatory comments are ending up to be really expensive for right. a bunch and, of people. And, and we should add, by the way, the, the person at the center of this, Donald Trump, right, has uh, so far been able to just use a lot of donations from average people around the country. He's, he's used uh, 2020 election and his effort to overturn that as a real huge fundraising gain for himself. And they've, they've, they've collected millions and millions and millions of dollars and that has funded some of his loss, uh, some of his legal costs and so on. So he hasn't really had to shoulder much of this uh, himself. He's had donors around the country actually uh, paying for some of this. So uh, the, the person at the center of all those lies hasn't really had to pay those costs in the same way. Again, uh, defamation, $16 million a piece. Emotional distress, $20 million a piece. Punitive damages, $75 million. Uh, let's bring in CNN senior legal analyst Ellie Honig uh, to explain this all. Um, Ellie, uh, for those of us who are uh, not attorneys, uh, if you could explain the difference between defamation money emotional distress money and punitive damage money. Sure, Jake. So first of all, any way you cut this up, this is a massive verdict. This is a real statement by the jury. So first of all, when we, when we talk about defamation damages, and that totals out to about $16 million for each of these plaintiffs, that means the damage to their reputation. What you're trying to do with this number is make them whole. It's impossible, obviously, to put a scientific number on this, that's what juries are for. And they've judged that the amount of damage done to the reputation of these two women is $16 million each. Then you get into emotional distress. Again, there's not a scientific formula for how you equate emotional distress to dollars. Again, that's what juries do. And here they've decided that that is worth about $20 million for each of these plaintiffs. And so if you take what we call together, all those numbers are what we call compensatory damages, meaning how much are these women do in order to make them whole again, essentially to pay them back. And that totals out to about $72 million. Now, the second big category is punitive damages and those awards total $75 million. Punitive damages are different. They're for a different purpose. They're to punish. They're to punish Rudy Giuliani for extraordinarily egregious conduct. They're intended to send a message to Rudy Giuliani and to the general public. And I think that's exactly what the jury did here. When we think about the inequities in this case, when we think about an extraordinarily powerful, remorseless liar like Rudy Giuliani, compared to these women who are civil servants, they never signed up for this. Their lives were turned over. And I think that's why you see such a high number here from the jury. It's, it's pretty uh, astounding. And now, uh, Ellie, I've often seen big uh, jury uh, numbers like these uh, whittled down in, in appeals. Do you think that that's likely to happen? Well, Rudy Giuliani certainly has the right to appeal and will appeal. The main way that these numbers often get whittled down is on the punitive damages side of this. Sometimes you'll see a jury come back with a compensatory damages amount, and then the punitive damages amount is four, five, ten times as much. Appeals courts don't like that. Appeals courts are going to look at the reasonableness of it and the ratio. Generally speaking, we have about a one-to-one -one ratio here. We have about 70-some million, 72 or $3 million dollars on the compensatory side, $75 million. On the punitive side, generally speaking, appeals courts are okay with a one-to-one -one ratio or so. If the punitive damages had been, say, double compensatory, then I think you might be in a situation where an appeals court can knock it down. But yes, appeals courts do have the ability to knock down these numbers. They do fairly often. But given that the equality of the numbers here, and I think given the strength of the evidence, I think the, the plaintiffs are gonna have a good argument to uphold this verdict on appeal. 